A year after NATO won the war, US troops are once again on combat alert. Pretty high alert once we're out here on the border. This is about as front line as it gets right here. Lieutenant Chris Sullivan is one of 40,000 foreign troops in the NATO-led peacekeeping force called K4. His unit patrols the boundary between Kosovo and Serbia proper. And in the five-kilometre no-man's land between K4 and Serb forces, paramilitary fighting is beginning again. Look out on this ridge line, so you can see that it's dug up. There's a trench line that the UCPMB has dug, and there's a bunker at the, the far end of it to the south. Albanian guerrillas, calling themselves the UCBMP, are using this demilitarized zone to mount new attacks on Serb troops. About 140 fighters, out of reach of K4, have occupied the boundary village of Dobrosin. Their aim is to liberate other Albanian villages in Serb-held territory, and they're already drawing blood. There was a series of firefights uh, mixed with automatic weapons fire and uh, explosions, and this would happen three or four times a day. And that, from that, it could be determined that they were doing a search and attack operation. And then uh, the UCPMB actually claimed it a victory, uh, claiming that they had killed uh, five MUP policemen. NATO occupies a land on the edge of war. Just as Serbs once drove out Albanians, Albanians are now trying to empty the land of Serbs. Inside K4 territory, where there are no Serb soldiers, the targets are civilians. Today, the village of Baban Most is farewelling the latest casualty. 33-year-old Militan Trajkovic was gunned down outside his house by unknown assailants. Like most victims, he appears to have been picked at random. His only crime was being Serb. Militan's father, Marko, nearly suffered the same fate. What happened in Baban Most is happening to every Serb enclave in Kosovo. Over the past two months, 22 Serbs have been murdered and dozens more seriously injured. The attacks have ranged from drive-by shootings to tossed hand grenades. The victims include a grandmother and a four-year-old child. There is no talk here of a peaceful, multi-ethnic Kosovo. The only question for these Serbs is whether they can live here at all. In the case that it will not change for the last year, two months, it will not be either for Serbs or for the rest of the nation. Like that. A year ago, NATO troops entered Kosovo to end ethnic violence. It was a time of extraordinary jubilation. Ethnic Albanians welcomed them as liberators from Serb terror. For 78 days, as NATO had bombed Yugoslavia, Serb forces had expelled Albanians from their homes. Hundreds of thousands were forced across the border. Thousands were executed and buried in mass graves. NATO has now ended the attacks on Albanians, but seems powerless to stop revenge attacks on Serbs. Albanians like Abdullah Hassani see no reason to forgive them for the terror their families suffered. A year ago, we joined Abdullah's family as they came home to the capital, Pristina. Serb paramilitaries had expelled them from their house on the first night of the bombing. The entire extended family crammed into this tractor to return. 
ecstatic that K4 had made Kosovo safe. But their joy was short-lived. As they arrived in drenching rain, they found Serbs had burnt their house the night the peace deal was signed. It was a sight even the youngest will never forget. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Yeah, nice to see you. This month, we came back to see how the family had fared. Aid agencies have helped them rebuild their home. But what pleases them most is that their Serb neighbours have gone. More than 200,000 Serbs have fled Kosovo in fear of Albanian reprisals. Fighters from the KLA, the Kosovo Liberation Army, burnt their homes so they could never return. The remaining Serb minority has hunkered down in ethnically cleansed enclaves, the largest in the northern city of Mitrovica. Once a mixed community, it has been split in two by ethnic hate. The French Foreign Legion is supposed to ensure safe passage. But in reality, there is almost no contact between Serbs on the northern side and Albanians on the south. The UN's Mitrovica spokesman, Michael Keats, concedes there has been no reconciliation. It's always very hard. It's, uh, you know, you say, well, Rome wasn't built in a day and Mitrovica certainly wasn't built in a year. So uh, we've got uh, you know, nearly a thousand years of ethnic conflict to overcome. So it's a bit difficult to say it will happen in a year, two years, three years. Or even longer. Or even longer, indeed. Personally, is it a bit depressing working here? seeing how incremental the progress is. Yes, it's the, uh, unfortunately, it's always the one step forward, the two steps back, and uh, that's been the situation for the last six months. Uh, I just hope the next six months will be better. For now, any Albanian brave enough to cross risks being met by the so-called bridge watchers. Serb so vigilantes like Stravko, armed with a black belt in karate and a baseball bat. And yeah. Yeah. Life for Serbs on the Albanian side is even more dangerous. Only 15 Serbs have dared to stay here. All of them live in a barbed wire compound around the Orthodox Church. Polish K4 troops guard their enclave 24 hours a day. Father Svetislav Nojic takes Sunday Mass before a handful of Serbs and one Russian peacekeeper. He now plans to leave the south side. The other Serbs are likely to follow. Imamo provokacije. 
nikako ne živim ovde. And Serbs accuse K4 of allowing the attacks to continue. On the northern side of Mitrovica, Serbs blockade their streets against K4 vehicles. Oliver Ivanovic is the local representative of the Serb National Council, a body now demanding that the whole of Kosovo be petitioned into Serb and Albanian sectors. We exactly need that, to organize ourselves, to protect ourselves, because K4 are not able or probably K4 don't like to protect the Serbs. The local K4 commander insists they are doing all they can, but admits they cannot give the Serbs the protection they demand. The opposition between uh, both sides here is really tough. We cannot stop uh, all the attacks. And uh, in the south side, where the Serbs are in mon minority, I understand that the, the Albanians want to, to get the, the complete possession of the territory. Uh, we can't stop uh, attacks against the Serbs. It's really difficult. Adding to KFOR's problems is that neither side will apologize for the violence both have suffered. Even this man of God believes Serbs did nothing wrong. Do ovog stanja kakvi smo, NATO je doveo stanje, jedno drugo. Albanci su sve imali, sve su imali, e, tražili su isključivo Kosovo Republika i sve što se ovo dešava i što će se dešavati vezano je za Kosovo Republiku, ne za Kosovo autonomiju. What is your view of what the Yugoslav state did to the Albanians, driving them out of the country? Morali da, da se presele. Vezano je opet za e, isto pitanje, prvo pitanje, prethodno pitanje. Da nisu tražili oni republiku, ne bi sve do ovoga došlo. Nikakvi drugi kompromis nisu hteli oni da, da traže i da rešavaju samo sve zbog kriv, najveća je greška kod Albanaca što traže odcepljenje od Jugoslavije. But Father Nojic at least admits the Albanians were forced out. <coughs> there is no such admission from the regime accused of ordering the ethnic cleansing. The Serbian capital, Belgrade, is just five hours' drive from Mitrovica. But officials here speak of a very different Kosovo a place where kindly Serbs protected their Albanian brothers. Ethnic Albanians were not driven by the Serbian or Yugoslav police, but they were driven by and with the bombs of NATO. The Kosovo was heavily bombarded. Civilian infrastructure was most heavily bombarded, uh, much more than the rest of the country. So the people fled. So NATO bombs destroyed the homes, smashed the furniture, painted Serbian graffiti on the walls, defecated on the floor. That was NATO smart bombs. No, those were, not, those were not NATO smart bombs. Anyway, when NATO overtook the province, all the pictures I saw with that, those things you are now mentioning, uh, have been pictured or, or used as a proof only after Serbian and Yugoslav troops left the province. These were some of the pictures we recorded during the first days of NATO entering Kosovo. Serb homes and shops were almost untouched, but Albanian districts bore unmistakable signs of violent ethnic cleansing. Serbia insists these and other pictures were part of a Western media conspiracy that included hiring actors to pose as refugees. For instance, you have a column of 1,000 people uh, going to Macedonia and a reporter of one of uh, Western media agencies is going straight forward to one man who, to uh, my surprise, speaks perfect English and he's perfectly dressed. Even I think I saw some makeup on his face. The same sense of denial appears every night on state television. <laughs> In this broadcast about a new war memorial, a general assures the public that Serbia won the war.
i ponovo ih vratili na međunarodnu scenu. Kao i da smo našom borbom razbili projektovani obrazac NATO za vojno kažnjavanje neposlužnih u 21. veku. Neprijatelja smo pobedili, kako kaže naš predsjednik i vrhovni komadan Slobodan Milošević. Ne zato što smo jači, već zato što smo bili bolji. It may not be believed, but it's the only version Serbs are seeing. This is all that's left of Belgrade's independent broadcast media, a website filled from secret locations around the city. Over the past two months, the government has taken over or shut down every critical television and radio station. Independent journalists like Sasha Mirkovic continue to struggle on, but he admits there is little public spirit to defend them. He will try to, you know, to win at the end, you know, and to show that it's possible that changes will happen in this country. But uh, on the other side, as I said, the problem is that uh, you are having less and less people who are ready for this kind of approach. And uh, I cannot blame people from uh, because of that, you know, they are tired, they are disappointed, ordinary people are looking for the possibilities to leave the country. In Belgrade, the last visible opposition is a student group. Called Otpor, meaning resistance, it does what it can to keep the flame of resistance burning. But the formal opposition parties are weak, divided and discredited. I think that we are having one of the worst opposition in the world and, you know, Everybody, like Milosevic, you know, will stay in power, you know, when you have such a bad opposition. Nor has Serbia given up its claim to Kosovo. The UN resolution that ended the war insists an autonomous Kosovo must one day return to the Yugoslav nation. We do think that K4 and United Nations mission all together should leave the province. Because the rate of killings, the rate of, rate of looting, and the rate of anarchy, uh, if we look at it from a perspective of one year that's passed, already passed, is on, uh, that high that, that they should leave. They, did, they didn't do anything to, to establish law and order and that famous multi-ethnicity that does not exist. But this worksite south of Mitrovica shows why Albanians will never accept Serb rule. With the coming of summer, the UN War Crimes Tribunal has resumed excavating Kosovo's killing fields. Former Sydney homicide detective Steve Leach is helping find where the bodies are buried. There was approximately 2,000 bodies exhumed up to uh, November last year, which were civilians. The majority have been identified by family members, and they have given explanations as to how the, their relatives were killed. There was a lot of old people. I mean, we've got ranges between say, six months and 90 years of age and over. So they definitely couldn't be uh, KLA fighters. Witnesses that have uh, come forward have described graphically how relatives, friends, whatever, had just been shot either by snipers or uh, they'd been dragged out of homes, dragged out of columns, taken away to a location by Serb paramilitaries who've heard gunshots. Today, new victims of hate are being buried in fresh graves. These Serbs may not be responsible for the crimes of war, but they are paying for what their state did and would do again. Kosovo has become a land that refuses to forgive or forget. NATO may end up staying here for decades. The desire for revenge will stay for generations.